Hey guys, Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric. I uh, wanted to talk to you about a second thing on this job real quick. Um, this customer must have just had the cement poured. It's a brand new, freshly done. I mean, it probably looks like less than a year old. I uh, want to encourage you to think about something before you do that. This is a meter for electrical. This coming down is a riser conduit coming out of the ground. It rises. This right here is a slip sleeve. We put on a new panel in the meter today, so we were, we have to put in these slip sleeves according to code now for the local utilities. I would suggest knowing where your splice is or your, um, your transformer pad. So in this subdivision, that right there in their backyard here actually probably feeds one, two, three, four, five, six homes. And it's rule of thumb is four to eight. It could do 12. But this splice box right here will branch out like a spider web. And if you don't see it in your backyard, it's probably because it's in your neighbor's yard or in their bushes. But it also could come from the front. So in my subdivision, we have little manholes that over time, after 15 years, the grass and the weeds and the bushes grow right over it. But somewhere is ours out front in my subdivision, because my subdivision is 15 years old. And across the street in my neighbor, Caddy Corner, is a transformer pad. So the point of this is, is that when you go to pour cement, it's a permanent situation. There's two things that I've seen always happen. Number one, there wasn't a foam pad put in here, so that would expand and contract for either this Comcast line or this right here, the riser for the, the power. So as this settles, this can pull out of the meter or yank the meter off the wall. I've had it both ways. I've had to fix that. The other thing that can happen is if you have a line fail going down below, well, that's point A to point B. Guess what? All of this cement, if you want your power restored and if it goes bad, it has to be pulled out. Some people ask, well, if it's in a conduit, am I safe? Well, typically if it's in a conduit, you are safer. But these older homes, they weren't. They were direct buried called a URD. And that URD um, basically means it's an aluminum compact conductor and it is going to be buried anywhere from 24 to 36 to maybe 40 inches deep. It all depends on the utility company as well as, you know, construction guys came in and graded this off about 35, 40 years ago. But the point of the matter is that if anything fell in the trench like a rock when they filled it, it can over time settle and hit a feeder and open right up. I've had it where the neutral's gone out, both hots, and a neutral or just one of the hots. Either way around it, imagine spending all this money on this beautiful cement pad and you got to pull it out. Especially when you get something done that's really large and you do um, your colored cement with the stamped uh, leaves or whatever you do on it. So keep in mind that the best thing sometimes to do is to put in cement pavers um, or just little blocks or some kind of rock, uh, grass, bark, whatever. You can always pull that back. But the other thing is you don't want to be planting trees next to this either. Just as trees will wreck sewer lines, so will they wreck your electrical line. So in this subdivision, all the juice is coming in backwards to the home, from back to front. In our subdivision where my house is, our meters are on the side of the garage and they go front into the uh, from the very front of the home street, excuse me, the street to the front of the home. And that right there is feeding that way. So either way, when you're doing your bushes or doing your landscaping, make sure that as you do or redo, you don't end up causing yourself more of a heartache later. Um, you can call your local utility company. They'd probably be more than happy to come out and let you know how that line was fed. And then before you go digging and trenching, make sure you check that out as well so you don't cut anything hot. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Have a good day.